All right, today we're looking at Dark Side. We're gonna look at his card abilities and a, how his Omega Beam works. And then we're gonna look at a quick team build with him also. So let's look at his card first. He has the keywords Apocalypse, New Gods, Cosmic, Deity, and Roller. He has a fantastic trait called Omega Beam. Free, if Dark Side hasn't been moved or placed this turn, and if no opposing character is adjacent, generate an Omega Beam marker, maximum one. Free, roll two D6. For each D6 result, you choose the order. Choose a horizontal or vertical direct path from the Omega Beam marker, and then place the marker exactly that many squares away along that direct path. If either path first crosses a square occupied by an opposing character, Remove the marker and then make a close attack targeting that character regardless of adjacency. Or a piece of block and terrain, remove the marker and then destroy that piece of block and terrain. His next trait is Boom Tube Tra Arrival, Phase and Teleport. When Dark Side uses it, his speed value is 12 and after resolutions, remove an action token from them. Third trait, is Mastermind. When Dark Side uses Mastermind, after resolutions, heal him one click. And he has a special defense power. It's on click number two all the way through until everything except for his last click. It is impervious but succeeds on four through six. Dark Side reduces penetrating damage dealt to him by equal or lower point characters. Protected Pulse Wave. Let's break down that Omega Beam trait. It is two free actions embedded inside that trait and they're independent of each other. So the first one you can activate if he hasn't moved or been placed this turn. That's where he can uh, generate the Omega Beam marker. And again, if nobody's adjacent to him. The second free action is independent of that first one, which means he could have moved this turn and you can still move the Omega Beam by rolling the 2d6. Under that second free action, it's uh, also good to point out that you choose a horizontal or vertical direct path for each of the uh, d6s. That doesn't mean you have to choose a horizontal and then a vertical or a vertical then a horizontal. You could choose that the Omega Beam moves horizontally twice or vertically twice. So you can choose horizontal or vertical for the first d6, then you can choose horizontal or vertical for the second d6. Uh, the other thing on that is that it's a, a, it's a marker. The omega beam is a marker, so it doesn't obey the same rules as a character that moves. So it can move throughout the board until one of the two stipulations are met, that being it its path crosses a square occupied by opposing character, or its path crosses a piece of blocking terrain. Aside from that, it can move right through elevation, hindering, uh, anything except for those two stipulations. That second trait, Boom Tube Arrival, the cool thing there is he can throw out his Omega Beam on the first turn, get the Omega Beam moving uh, and kind of sit back there and let characters come to him. If they get close on a particular turn, he can use the phase and teleport to jump halfway across the map and then take a token off of him so he's ready for his next turn. So he's going to be pretty tough for people to, to tie down. Let's take a look at the back of his card. He is starting out with an eight movement charge, uh, 12 attack, 19 defense invincible, outwit with a damage value of five. Uh, he comes in at 200 points, has quintessence, and zero range. His Omega Beam is going to be out there moving around, and he'll be attacking with a 12 attack value, which is very good, and a five damage, which is very solid. If he does get hit, those special defense powers is the four through six impervious that reduces 
penetrate him. So if people do get close to him, they're going to have to be swinging with a uh, with a three or higher for a chance to get through that. And it, uh, one or two penetrating isn't going to matter because he has impervious with the reduction of penetrating damage. As you see on his dial, he gets steel energy uh, on click four through the end. He has regen on the last click. And he also has increase in values uh, defensively throughout his dial. So after you hit him, you might get him down to that 17, but then he's gonna increase his way up to a 20 on the last click. His attack value is solid throughout, 12s into 11s and a 12 and 11 at the end, uh, which is really what you want on him. Solid attack value and solid damage because his Omega Beam is gonna be out there. You wanna try to make sure that you, when you get the chance to hit with it, that you do hit and 11s and 12s gives you that chance and that you're dealing damage, uh, solid damage. Fives and fours are great. It will be a close attack. So anything that combines with that close attack would also kick in. On his dial, those things that would combine with a close attack is the knockback from super strength on click two and three. So he can knock people back through the Omega Beam. The Steel Energy would also combine with Close Attack since the requirement is that the character hits and damages uh, an opposing character. So that is done through Close Attacks. So that's pretty cool. He, uh, he can knock back people through that Omega Beam. He can steal energy through the Omega Beam. So Now Darkseid's teammate today is going to be Starro. Uh, we're going to use Starro at his 100 point value, which is going to have his special attack power, special uh, movement power, and his stop click on his defensive power. He'll be with an 18 invincible, the 6 movement, and let's take a look at those uh, three special powers and how they are worded. Uh, again, Star is going to have a 10 range and three lightning bolts. So on his special movement power, he has sidestep mind control. When Star uses mind control, you may KO a uh, Star fight bystander adjacent to an opposing character. If you do, Star may target that opposing character regardless of range and line of fire. Targets of Starro's mind control modify defense minus one for each Starro fight bystander adjacent to them. Special attack power is whenever Starro hits, generate a Starro fight bystander adjacent to the hit character. Power, generate three. At the beginning of your turn, if there are six on the map, heal one click. Maximum six bystanders on the map. You may generate up to that number. Uh, his two traits won't come into play on the point value that we're going to play him at. Uh, but being able to generate those star fights is going to be key so that uh, Darkseid can use them to mastermind onto. Darkseid can also mastermind onto Starro and take advantage of that invincible that he has as a reducer. Uh, so it gives multiple options on how you can mastermind off attacks from dark side. Starro is a colossal character, and the sidestep gives you even more placement options because he can just pick up dark side and move, or he can sidestep and move dark side a little bit. Dark side can pick up the tiny Starro fights and move. Uh, so you have a lot of versatility with this two character team. All right, let's break down Darkseid's Omega Beam uh, in a little bit more detail and see how quick that marker can get across the board. So again, Omega Beam is uh, free if Darkseid hasn't been moved or placed this turn, and if no opposing character is adjacent, generate an Omega Beam marker, maximum one. So we will generate an Omega Beam uh, right there. 
Okay, so that's a free action. Then free. Roll two d6. For each d6 result, you choose the order. Choose a horizontal or vertical direct path from the omega beam marker and then place the omega beam exactly that many squares away along that direct path. And then it goes on to the different things it can cross. Okay, so let's actually do it with some dice rolls and see how we can maneuver on this board. This board has uh, indoor, outdoor, block-in, walls, water, hindering, all kinds of uh, different terrain. Now the marker moves as a marker, so it's not going to move as a character. So nothing really happens unless it crosses one of the two things that are stipulated on the card. So if it crosses a square occupied by an opposing character, that's one stipulation, or if it crosses a piece of block and terrain. Okay, so let's all right, let's take a look at how that omega beam moves with some actual dice rolls. All right, we got four and a six. So on this map that has all kinds of different terrain, so a four and a six will go one, two, three, four, five, six and place here. Then we got this direct path. So we'll go one, two, three, four, place here. Okay, that would be turn one. Okay, second turn, the opponent does something. Our free action again. We got a five and a six. All right, so with that five and six roll, we could get pretty far across this board since we have this open path there in front of us. Okay, so we would move vertical. One, two, three, four, five. Then we choose vertical again. One, two, three, four, five, six. That would get us in two turns onto row number seven. Now, of course, on this type of map, your opponent could and probably should uh, try to move into the building so that there's more blocking uh, makes it a little bit harder for that omega beam to get to people if there's a bunch of blocking terrain around. So that would be the strategy for your opponent to use. Keep in mind though that, for example, if that omega beam were to be placed out here and we move it in on the second turn, so your opponent's moved somewhere into that, that building, You've moved your omega beam the first turn, second turn, the opponent moves into there, or third turn, they're in there. When your omega beam crosses, that's a free action, and it would then destroy the block and terrain. On that same turn, you could activate your free action to place it out again so that it's ready to go on your next turn. So that's the cool thing with being at two free actions. You can place it and then a separate free action to move it, or you could move it if it happens to uh, explode, then you can free action to place the next one so it's ready to go the next turn. Let's take one more look at how this Omega Beam marker interacts with terrain types. So on this map, you can see there's hindering and elevation uh, right there outside of the starting area. So as we go to place the Omega Beam, we can just go right through it. It's placement. It's not a character, so it's not going to stop when it gets to this hindering. It doesn't have to go for the elevation change. It just goes straight through as a placement. So on a wide open map like this, you can go straight across that board pretty quick. Let's take a quick look at one team build idea for Dark Side. So I would team Dark Side up with Starro. They both share the roller keyword and this uh, Starro, I would use him at his 100 point value. He has Invincible there. He has Invincible there. That can allow us to take advantage of Darkseid's traded mastermind should somebody get up close. Starro has a 10 range, three target, 
with uh, the mind control that he does. Darkseid has no range, but he'll be throwing out that Omega Beam. Starro is great because he also can generate his pogs, which can move across the board and get him mind control when they're adjacent to an opposing character. He can KO one of his bystanders to uh, attempt to mind control that opponent. So the idea on this type of team would be to sit back here in the starting area and throw out their Omega Beam and bystanders and make the opponent come to you. The ways you can do the placement, I would put Omega Beam out here to the side. So on Starro then I would generate those pogs. It's a power action. He can throw out three at a time. I would generate one here behind dark side and probably two up in front so that they can start moving across the board or that they can stay there and kind of block off dark side so one or two of them can start moving across. The bystanders have a four movement and sidestep so they can work their way across. The Omega Beam, of course, is going to be dependent on the dice roll. So the next turn he could generate three more with another power action. So if we do these two that move, they could sidestep up here. Next turn he can power action, throw out some more. Whenever six of them are on the board, then Starro can heal. So his power says his special attack power, which is throughout his dial, except for the last click, his stop click. His power says at the beginning of your turn, if six of his bystanders are on the board, you can heal one click. So that gives you some options if Darkseid does need the Mastermind of Starro. You're able to get six bystanders out there. Starro has a, has a way he can heal. Darkseid, of course, has the Mastermind. He has some regen at the end of his dial. He has steel energy on half of his dial. He has the 50-50 impervious that reduces penetrating on all but two clicks, all except for his beginning and ending click. And he also has where he can heal one if he masterminds to somebody. So when he masterminds, after resolution, heal him one click. So Darkseid has a bunch of ways to heal, and Starro has uh, one way to heal. So this could be a pretty hard-to-kill team. Uh, of course, Darkseid could just mastermind to these little guys and pop them. But depending on what the setup is, you have some options on what to do. Uh, so this one could be a fun team. Uh, defensive sits back and lets the Pogs and Marker do all the work. The other cool thing about this team is it will make it so that your opponent is going to have to close that distance to get in on you. Starro's reach of just a native 10, so even without using his bystanders to extend that range to move up the board and then as far as they get is what he can attack from. Just that 10 range is going to be tough for your opponent to get into their range without entering in that 10 squares that Starro can reach. His mind control uh, has three targets. So his mind control can attack the three people that are trying to move in and then move them back again or position them where they're right in the range of the Omega Beam. So the way that these two work together really complements each other. You got repositioning or where you can keep them away. You have Dark side being able to move that marker across the board, free actions, and they're both going to be able to be healed and hard to kill. Now, one more cool option is the star fights are tiny, so Dark Side can carry them if he has to move or reposition as the opponent closes the distance. Keep in mind, though, that the Omega Beam is a free action that can only be taken if dark side has not been moved or placed this turn so if you do want to reposition you would throw out the omega beam first if you don't have one on the board and then feel free to reposition dark side he can move carrying the star of fight uh, along for the ride
Now, before we end this video, we should probably give a shout out to Paul at Hyper Two Sonic for making the coolest Starro fights that are out there. So even though I might not win every match that I have, I definitely have the coolest Starro fights on the board. Check it out. If you dig what we do, go ahead and like and subscribe. Thanks for watching.